Hey there, Emily Miller. Hey, Richburg. How is everyone on the chat and you today? Good. Looks like everyone's chiming in. There's like 40 people over it, 66 people over at YouTube. Yeah. Hi, Helen. I didn't it get to is... say hi to you last time, but Helen and I have been corresponding. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Helen Bender, ben... Helen B. I, I can't remember nice. how to pronounce her last name. Sorry. But we've been nice. talking about looming and challenges and, oh, God. Uh, yeah, challenges. Yeah. Challenge it, I'll tell you. I'm trying it not to challenge. think of it as a challenge. I'm trying to think of it as a learning experience because. Right? Yeah, it's it, been, I, it's been uh, quite a week, I'll tell you. So a couple of announcements, Em, and then we'll get right to what you're doing. Absolutely. I am, you know, when we had bead shop meetings, I don't know, you remember this? And you and I would do this too. Whenever we'd have meetings, we'd get out the lotion. <laughs> And we'd pass the lotion around. So I'm having a meeting. That, I, I have to say that as I'm getting a little older, maybe some of my quirks are beginning to come out. Like I don't like lotion on the inside of my hands. Oh. At all. Like oil is better, but lotion or any no. kind of like stickiness. Oh. So I put lotion on. Oh, I put lotion on. <laughs> And I and you do this and I yeah I do that and then I rub it all up my arms and sometimes yeah. on my legs and then yeah. I have to wash my palms your palm very carefully and, soap, and the That's water hilarious. falls off the back but I can't yeah. I cannot do that I Penis, love like, it you know when spray sunblock came out I was like oh, thank you yeah. please thank you because yeah. putting yeah, on that I know. somewhere where you can't wash your hands like Oh. Yeah, you're screwed. You're it's, screwed. Well, it's just yeah, it's a thing. During during this time that we have chatted, I have lotioned, and <laughs> the lotion has seeped in. So oh. I am good to go. Yeah, and it's winter time, so dry skin on the back of my hands is jam my yeah. jam. No, yeah, right. So uh, yeah, I'm back to metal smithing nails, which excellent. You know. Yeah, <laughs> the world is back to normal. I'm it's walking, nice I'm back to walking two large dogs with tiny scrapes on my hands, and that's um, right. Yeah, back to working meals. meals, putting up a tent at the farmers market, and you know, that's right. Uh, that's right. Working hands. I'm not. Well, I'm, I wanted I'm not a delicate flower, Kate. No, no, we are not delicate flowers. That is for sure. Um, so I have a couple of announcements, and then we'll get right to Emily's. Jam, Emily, people are jumping on like crazy. That's I know awesome. it went up to like, like my 10, 10 or 12 people while we were talking on YouTube. Yeah, thank so, goodness. A little I'm, bit of vamping. I'm, so, I'm so happy that everybody's here and it's going to be a fun show. You guys are going to like this a lot. Yeah, we're going to have fun. I so, a couple of things the handout was not up this morning on the project, but it's up now. Uh, it's there on the project page, so you'll find it there. Emily did a really great and informative handout for it, A. B, if you opened your newsletters today, folks, you saw that our loyalty program had a bit of a hiccup. So, you know, when you're a VIB, when you make an order, you start to get points, and those points are redeemable for rewards. Um, we went on, uh, we were looking at stuff yesterday and we noticed that our rewards program was paused and we went, oh, we didn't pause our program. So we went in on the back end, looked it up and our rewards program paused itself in lieu of a larger payment. So we didn't get any notice, which I don't know why we didn't. Why would you? But why would I? Why would we? So our loyalty program, full disclosure, costs about a hundred bucks for us every month to have so you know to have an app that does the loyalty points and does the VIB and the tiers and all that. It's great. It was going up to six hundred dollars, <laughs> and I'm sure there was a bunch of added features for that increase, right? No. Right? So they wouldn't unblock it until we paid it. 
And I'm like, no, if I had 600 extra dollars, I could hire someone to do something else. <laughs> right? Not a loyalty program. What so I do an extra $600 a month. Right? What could we do? <laughs> So Drea and I, fortunately, we were going to change over the loyalty program at the beginning of the year anyway, right? We were going to, because our old loyalty program was a little clunky. It didn't actually streamline. They didn't quite do what we wanted it to do. So we'd been doing our research. Thankfully we had, and we had kind of everything ready to go, but we didn't want to turn it on until the new year, make sure everything worked and everything. So. Uh, we scrambled. I managed to get all of the customer data from our old loyalty program. Took a little bit, but I got it. I managed to upload that data plus your VIB levels plus your rewards balances. I feel like so, the most impossible theme should be playing in the background. I'll tell you. And I, you know, I'm IT support. That's, that's me. I mean, I did used to work at Apple Computer way back in the early 90s. Yeah, Janice, this is the first. Janice, we kept it from you yesterday. I thought. That's you on a need to know show. basis. You didn't really <laughs> know. No. I thought she could watch the show today and then learn about it so she wouldn't have to worry. <laughs> so we did that. We got everything uploaded. The better, even more exciting is the rewards are, we're streamlining the rewards. So you'll keep the rewards you get. You'll keep your points balanced. You're going to keep your tier at copper, silver, and gold. We're going to be able to give you, you can reward, you could do a reward for like only a hundred points That's and good. you can get some free stuff. So if you want an extra pair of snips or you want some glue or whatever, and you have a hundred rewards points, add them on and you'll be able to get free stuff. We're still fine tuning it, right? But you are going to have your rewards. Um, but I was, I was, when Drea texted me Shit. yesterday, yeah, she was, uh, Houston, we've got a problem, but, uh, we did it. So. Hopefully, friends, it will be all up and running. We'll streamline it. We're going to change all the verbiage. So hopefully by this weekend, um, we're going to, we'll have it done. So, and it's not $600. Thank you very much. So uh, it's not what it was, but it's certainly not a 600% raise. And day in the life of a small business owner. Right. I, cause yesterday I was going to do work on some samples. Instead I had to put on my IT hat. So anyway, rant over, we're good to go. Uh, and stay tuned to the newsletter. You'll get more info about that. So that happened. We also today launched some new, um, metal tribal and trade beads mm -hmm. that, oh, awesome. Aren't they gorgeous? And those are going to stay in our rotation. So even if they sell out, and I hope they will, please, um, we're going to keep those going. Yeah. And we're carrying them. And I'll show you a little bit maybe at the end of Emily's broadcast. I'll show them again on Friday. Um, but we're carrying them in four flavors, the copper, the brass, the silver, and the black, the the antique black. Um, and right now, Leslie's all, how do you find out what tier you are? Well, in our old rewards, you could sign into your rewards and see all of that. There's no reward sign in right now, but you'll be able to sign in and see your tiers and all of that. So hang tight. Um, and all of that info will be coming out at you hopefully by this weekend. Knock wood. We'll see. But I wanted to let you know we're on it. Um, someone is also asking about the France retreat. Um, the France retreat is almost full friends. If you haven't heard, I'm taking nine people with me to France and we're making stuff in near Toulouse. It's going to be fun. It's going to be May to June. It's going to be awesome. There's uh, a link. If you go to Sir Solster retreats, it's all there. And Drea will have it back in the newsletter as well. 
So uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. Hopefully, maybe, Knockwood, Emily and Janice and I will be able to do that someday together. Uh, this is my exploratory trip. But we are going to be all back together in San Juan Batista. So we will have all of you together, um, all together, and we'll see you in uh, August. And we'll announce all of that stuff very, very soon. So I think that's all the business I have right now, Emily. So I think everyone is eagerly awaiting. <laughs> Janice says, Kate, glad you're taking one for the team. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough really, but I'll do my best. Um, M, you have, let me put this picture up again. Here are the two earrings you're making. And speaking of retreats, this is something that you shared at one of our retreats. And now we want to share it with all of you all. Um, you're going to make some wireframed earrings today. Two samples, Limelight and Celebrity. And I want to tell you, we're selling those coin pearls. Those launched today too. And I paired them. I paired, so we're selling them in pairs. And I paired every pair. So. Taking one for the team again, Kate. Come again. Sure. I'm, you know, it's my life here. Um, but you folks, when you order them, you should get two that look nice. Okay. Uh, or that match pretty well. You know what I mean. Anyway. Emily, I'm going to add your, this, your working space to. I can't, it's hard for me to see it through my camera. So I always have to watch. Wait. Yeah. Soon. I'm going to embiggen it a little bit and I'm going to go it down a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Let me make it I'm a little bit my bigger. Highlight light too, because there's a little bit of a shadow okay. down here from my camera. Let me do that. And there we go. But once you don't need to see my face anymore, I can. Right. More light on the subject. So, M, I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm going to mute myself so yeah. you don't hear me as I bustle. Um, but I'll keep an eye on comments, etc. And Thank you. you're oh. in. Let's okay. do it. My YouTube on my iPad keeps crashing, but um, I'm going to try and keep up with this, you guys, and uh, keep everything kind of in focus and lit up enough. Uh, so, yes, Kate mentioned that. <clears throat> this was a technique that I brought out at the very first retreat, in fact, um, where I did what I call the craftsman necklace. And we did, I don't know, I think there's six or eight different wire component pieces that we did in that. And I string them all together with similar beads and it ended up making kind of a statement-y necklace that looks very crafty and handmade and doesn't have, um, doesn't have a lot of uh, store-bought components. It's all mostly ones that you've made yourself. But this technique has been around for a while. And really what we're doing is um, we're making a component with wire over wire. So this is not, um, it's not brain surgery, trust me. Um, it does take a little attention to detail. And I think this is a place where it's wise to spend a little more time doing this as prettily as you possibly can. That way it comes out kind of looking the, nice, the nicest you can make it. Now, this is relating to Friday's uh, show, which is going to be all about bullion wire, because basically what we're making here is bullion wire. We're making our own by coiling wire over a mandrel. In this case, my mandrel is another piece of wire, but it could be something else entirely. And we're leaving the wire on the mandrel. We're not going to take it off. So Friday, I will talk a whole bunch more about um, making bullion wire that you remove from the mandrel. But in this case, we're going to make that wire component right on that pearl that you're working with. And, um, you know, when I, when I make earrings and it's one of the things that sells pretty well at my booth, I sell a fair amount of earrings. Um, one of the things that is, is noticeable for me is that I really want the earrings to be kind of as close as possible to one another. I don't, I, yes, I, I kind of get the whole sisters and not twins situation, but when I'm going to sell something and not just going to wear it myself, I really want it to be pretty, pretty matchy matchy to each other. So this is one of the few times where I actually cut wire in particular lengths so that I can use it and have it come out as the same as possible. And that 
that is leads me to do things kind of in the assembly line process. So we're using 22 gauge today and 26 gauge. You'll need um, round nose, chain nose pliers, wire straightening pliers, and a flush cutter for today's project. You know, if you're going to do this in um, sterling silver, you could um, oxidize this later. You could also use the titanium wire. And let me grab it. Let's see if I've got one right here. That's a non tarnished silver. Hold that thought. Here's the titanium. So this is the titanium against the against the non tarnished silver. Um, I think the titanium is a pretty good stand-in for oxidized wire. And you can oxidize this um, if you make it in sterling. You can oxidize it after the fact. You don't need to oxidize it before. And then you'd polish up the highlights so that the highlights would show. Let me show you a, um, a little pendant I made um, with the same technique that's on a square stone or a rectangular stone. And this was oxidized and then polished again. So I used a little Pro Polish pad just to bring up the highlights. And um, I'll tell you one little thing that I would not do again. Um, in this case, I would have oxidized, what I should have done was oxidized this frame without the stone in place. Because I can see under light, and you might be able to see too, that you can see the wire running through the stone. And that's because the wire is black in there. And that's and too bad. I couldn't have oxidized. I huh? When you oxidize, do you use liver of sulfur with that? I, I do. That's my yeah. preference. I mean, mm -hmm. so there are a couple of products you can use for oxidizing. Silver Black or Black Max is one that you paint on and don't dip into. But the toxicity of it itself um, and the fumes and the, and the kind of the material that it is, is a little more toxic. And so yeah. I work with liver of sulfur, even though liver of sulfur has a little bit of odor to it. And it's not non-toxic to the point where I wouldn't take a swig of it or anything, but it's yeah. uh, a little less toxic over time. It, it actually, um, it, uh, you put a little baking soda in it and you kind of neutralize it better than yeah. you do with Black Max. So I don't care for a Black Max particularly, but it would have solved that problem for sure. Not Well, any and the uh, silver black also in my uh, experience Mm. Pearls and silver black are a no-go. Right. So liver of sulfur is pretty good with no matter what you're doing. Um, exactly. You can occasionally run into small uh, faceted gemstones that are waxed um, to make them a little shinier by the manufacturer. And that silver black or, or even the, uh, I'm sorry, liver of sulfur will take that wax off. So it'll change how it looks, but they all change then at that point. And so... It's to me kind of a wash. I rather, I prefer the liver of sulfur particularly. But um, I also could have painted that liver of sulfur on and then not had the stone involved at all. So there's there's a couple ways to handle it, but um, this is just an early version of kind of what we're doing here, right? Just a pendant instead of an earring. Now, one thing to notice here is that I oriented the loop side to side and not in the same flat plane as the piece. With the earrings, we're going to orient the loop in the same plane as the pearl because our ear wire is going to go through from front to back. Okay. And <clears throat> with wrapped loops, I think it's important to think about that orientation. Simple loops, not so much. You can actually bend them around a little bit and you have a little bit of flexibility with wrap loops, but I think it's just good to get in the habit of kind of doing it the way you intend to do it first rather than having to go in there and, and manipulate them around. Okay. So um, onwards to this project. And again, um, I said this is one of the few times that I will actually cut my wire in pieces so that I can um, have my two earrings kind of come out as similar to one another as possible. Um, so I have two coin pearls and they're already on the head pins that I am made or, or actually kind of a partial eye pin. Um, this is 22 gauge, which fits perfectly through the coin pearls with no problem. On Friday, I'll talk a little bit about the bead reamer and how to use that. Um, and if you have to ream open a pearl, it's pretty simple. And it's probably the best use of a bead reamer that you could kind of come up with. So I cut my um, wire into about um, four and a half inch or so lengths. Actually, mine are a little bit longer. But um, there's a little bit of a thought that I do when I pre-cut wire. Um, if I pre-cut wire in a particular length, I try to make it either 
so short that it's only what I need with very little waste or longer than I need so that the waste piece I cut off, I can use for something else. Okay. Um, I, I think this about leather. I think it about anything that's hard to actually rejoin back together. You know, Kate and I have the, the skills and the technology to actually melt our silver down into a blob of silver and re-roll it out into wire. We don't really do it very often because it's kind of a long process and it's cheaper and faster to buy it yourself, but it can be done. So if you're working with sterling or gold filled wire, hang on to your scrap um, with our, our uh, plated wires like this silver plate over, over copper. I'm not going to worry about scrap too much, but having a little chunk left over, that's sometimes useful. You know, I wouldn't, I won't throw it away. I also have a piece of 26 gauge wire. And for this particular uh, piece, I decided to do contrasting colors because I think it'll be easier for you to see on screen. You can do whatever you like. You do you for colors. This could be silver and gold mixed together. This could be copper and antique bronze mixed together, which is kind of a cool look. Um, and antique bronze and gold together is really interesting. And it's not the right cup of tea for everybody, but it's got a little oomph to it. Anytime you mix in a little bit of gold into darker things, I think it's got some, some fun things. It's got some things to say. So I'm going to start um, by making my two head pins for my beads, which I've already got here. And I made them with what I would kind of call a shepherd's crook at the end of them. Okay, so it's a little hook and it's not a complete loop. It's just going to stop right at this process at this point. Now, I do go ahead and put my pearls on them because they're going to help me with the next step um, when I come back to these. But that making that little shepherd's crook on the end, soup, soup easy, as Kate would say, grab on the end of the wire. And I'm just near the end of the plier, not at the very tip, but not very far up, eh, quarter inch up from the end of my plier. I'm just going to roll it around. So simple little shepherd's crook in the end of my wire. And that kind of becomes my head pin. And I can slide a bead on pretty easily like that. And these coin pearls are really, really nice quality. They, um, they have some beautiful luster to them. And I actually like all of this texture that shows up on them. I think it really is interesting. Most of the time when you find one with a lot of texture, the other side is kind of plain. So if you like that plainer look, that's fine. You can pick the plainer side. But I sort of like that bumpy, organic, reflective kind of texture, right? So once I've got this made, um, I should have, oh, you know what? I shouldn't have done that on that piece of wire, but that's okay. I'm going to cut off a chunk of this guy. I need a piece of 22 gauge wire to um, use as my mandrel. So this is what I'm going to wind my wire around, and it's going to ultimately be the frame that wraps around the bead. Okay. So I've got my 26 gauge wire here, and I cut off a piece. Again, I cut a piece of wire, which I don't often do. Um, because I'm trying to save material, but I cut a piece about two feet long and this will be plenty for this process. So we'll need four pieces of wire cut in that four inch range and two pieces of wire cut about two feet long. So four of the 22 gauge, two of the 26 gauge. I chose these two gauges, um, because I liked the scale of them. Uh, we could actually wind 28 gauge around this 22 gauge if we wanted to instead of 26 gauge. We could wind 24 gauge around this 22 gauge, which would give us a little bit bigger look. We could bump this 22 gauge frame wire up a gauge to 20 gauge. So if I had a much bigger bead, I might actually bump up um, a, a mandrel size for myself um, to give a little bit more scale to this. Um, I think scale and proportion is one of those things that you get to choose when you're making jewelry. You know, how you accent things and how you make things kind of stand out or blend together better is color, texture, size. And then in under the size category comes scale. So you can choose to have things that are very industrial and big and beefy looking next to something tiny. Or you can pick something that's kind of in the scale of the thing you're working with. Or you can pick something tiny to get next to a really big, vibrant, um, say something kind of bead 
it's your choice. That's that's the beauty of actually making your own jewelry, as far as I'm concerned. So easy to do. I'm going to take my 26 gauge. I'm going to lay it on top of my 22 gauge, and I'm going to begin to wind around. Now, this first couple of coils will look a little bit irregular, a little bit rustic. Rustic's not a bad thing. It's just to describe it. And I'm winding this on. You can wind front to back, back to front, left to right, your choice. I'm winding this on a little bit the way I would to make, to close a wrapped loop. As I'm winding, I'm putting pressure towards the hand that I'm holding with. So my coils are almost starting to overlap. Can you see that well enough? Hoping so. Be yeah, it looks good, Em. Yep. Looks good. Hanging right yep. next to one another. If you find yourself beginning to sort of Wow, slide out, move away. You can use your thumbnail to a point to get some of these to kind of come back together. And if you look carefully, at, even at my pre-made coils from the other day, there's a little gap there, maybe a little gap there. It's pretty minor, those small, small changes. So I wouldn't worry about those too much. But if you begin to overlap, and this is a place that it kind of gets messy. There is what I use often, a messy wrap. But in this case, it's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to unwind that and I'm going to go back again. So I used dead soft wire for all of this work. And I talked about dead soft wire in our last wire adventure. So dead soft wire is wire that's at its most flexible state. It's able to be bent and manipulated easily. It's very soft and squishy. It does somewhat make it harder to control. But... In this case, we really need that dead soft malleability so that we can coil this wire tightly. If this was half hard wire I was coiling with, it would be springing away, okay? So I want dead soft wire in this case. And frankly, in the 22 gauge, the mandrel that I'm using, this guy, dead soft is fine. I straightened it a little bit with my wire straightener and I'm gonna bend it some more later. So again, having that non-bouncing back process is, is really good for me. Now, if you want to try this with half hard, be my guest. Be prepared for it to be a little bit harder on your fingers to do this winding. And speaking of hard on your fingers, we can actually use a tool to help us hold this a little more comfortably. So my wire, nylon wire straightener, the beauty of these tools is that you grip wire and the nylon jaw is soft enough not to mar your wire. I couldn't do this with any other tool. I would have to use my nylon jaw tool. So this gives me something to hang on to and a little bit easier to hang on to that coil and work with it. I only have five or six or seven coils out at a time, which means I have to stop and regrip fairly often. But that's okay. You can do that. And here's another trick. And this goes for all pliers. If you grip out here at the tip of the plier, you're having to put more force, you're having to grip harder with your hand than if you grip back here, okay? Now I'm not gonna go into the metal part, obviously, but I wanna grip where I can put the least amount of effort. And you can see how I'm overlapping. Can you see how I'm pulling it over to the plier side now? My, my big old giant fingers are out of the way. And your pearls are gonna vary a little bit in size to what I have. The If you choose the Celebrity, which is the peach colored pearl, your coil, you're gonna need a little bit more of a coil, sort of in the inch and a half range. If you choose the Limelight pearl, which is the white one, I was feeling very theatrical for some reason. Um, they're a little smaller, so you might need sort of an inch, inch and a quarter um, worth of coil. Let me grab a ruler and we will check out where we're at here. Oh, for those lovely steel rollers. So I'm at about an inch and a quarter here. Okay. I'm going to do just a couple more coils and I can move my coil around on my wire. Okay. So it's okay if you don't start right in the middle, you should be able to move it around with no trouble. Don't grip your coil with a, with anything other than a, when a nylon jawed plier though, you will. Well, you can, but you'll probably not like what happens. So I won't say no. You can do what you need to do. 
just a few more coils here and we'll check for fit. So again, this in this earring case, because I'm working on an earring, so I'm just a little over an inch and a half, just a little uh, under an inch and a half. So in this case, um, I'm going to stop here for the moment. And I would actually, if I was making this as a pair of earrings, I would actually start again. Doing the idea of the assembly line, so making each part for each piece of a pair of earrings, for me, far makes it so much easier to have a pair that comes out and um, are matching rather than just uh, not just, I'm not really looking for twins. I am looking for sisters, but I want them to be as close as sister, as close as I am to my sister. How about that? I'm pretty close to my sister. So I'm going to take this now and I'm going to begin to form it around the pearl. So here's where that little head pin kind of helps out because I can put that coil right on top of that head pin and I can start to bend the coil and the mandrel around the edge of the pearl. And I'm, what I'm looking for is to have my coils come within about two or three millimeters of the top of that wire where the wire's emerging from the pearl. And boy, I feel like I'm, I feel like I nailed the closeness of this. I feel like I did. So at this point, you have options. If you needed just one to two more coils, you have this little tail wire and you have your working wire. So you can actually cut those, uh, or I'm sorry, or coil more if you wanted, or you can cut them off if you think you're ready. And I kind of think I'm ready, okay? So I'm gonna straighten this out again, and we'll measure it again for those of you using the Limelight Pearl. That's the white pearl. I'm gonna measure it right on that inch. So I'm just at about an inch and a half and a sixteenth. Is that a sixteenth or an eighth? That's an eighth. So an inch and um, five eighths is where I'm at. Your pearls will vary a little bit though. So check it on your on your pearls. Now I'm going to come in with my flush cutter and I'm going to cut flush. <clears throat> you know we talked last time about flush cutting kind of in a general sense, but I really find that if I cut flush. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I cut flush, I have a better chance of laying that little end of the wire flat with all of its little brothers and sisters. So I'm going to come in here and cut flush, and I'm cutting flush to this wire. Okay. So the flat side of my flush cutter is crossing that wire at 90 degrees. Cut that guy off. I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers, and I'm going to come in. I don't think you guys can see this down in there. And I'm just gonna press that little end down with its little brothers. So I can't really feel it with my fingers, right? I'm gonna go over on the other side. And this is where I said, don't, you know, don't worry about those first couple of coils because we're just gonna undo them. We're gonna say bye-bye. If I needed to, <coughs> excuse me, um, I could coil those on another coil or two. And I'm gonna go in again and I'm gonna cut flush. So it's flush to this wire, not anything else. That's the orientation that I want to take on. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and just gently push that little end down with its brothers. Okay. And again, I can use my thumbnail to kind of, kind of tidy that up. Right. And I do find it's easiest to center your um, mandrel wire, your coil on your mandrel wire, because we're also going to use our fingers for this little process. Thank goodness our fingers work. I would be in a world of hurt without that. So laying it on top of the head pin, I'm going to bend the wire up on each side of the pearl. Okay. And this is just a little kind of wiggly point, but it goes away really fast. Okay. I'm going to take one wire at a time and I'm going to bend it around that head pin wire. Get out of there, you. Just around, like a little hook, okay? And I'm not worrying about what's going on down here yet. That's not, that's too soon to worry about him. And I'm going to go over to the other side and bring him up. And it's going to go right on top of the first. And I'm going to do them both the same direction. So they're kind of going left to the left and left to the right, okay? 
Okay. Just like that. And if I want to move my coil around a little bit, I probably can. Let's see if I can push it a little bit with that thumbnail. Yeah. So again, going to come in here and cut flush one, cut flush two. So again, I'm just making a little hook that goes around that head pin wire. I'm going to come in with my plier, just gently close them onto that wire. And then I'm going to pull the head pin up. Ha. All right. Pull that little head pin right up. And again, gently pinch that little loop down onto itself. So it holds it in place. That looks great, Emily. Really How nice. How easy is that? Isn't that fun? Now, let me ask you a quick question at this sure. point. So if you didn't want to, because I know you're going to go in and make the loop next, but sure. let's say that you had something that you wanted to stack on top of that. You could. So if you have that doubled wire, you yeah. could, right? If it has yeah. a large enough hole. Yeah. You mean on here? You mean on this wire? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't have any extra beads, right? Well, that's a lie. I don't have any extra beads right at my fingertips. Yeah. <laughs> I do. You know, we could do this double or triple. Right. Be real pretty. It would be very, um, say something. Yeah, sure. it'd be real pretty. Here, wait, I've got another bead. Here's a bead. I, I, saying that I'm working at my workbench and I don't have another bead sitting here. So yes, haha. Uh -huh. It's hilarious. Yes. Here's but a little, look at how pretty. Thing, um, citrine. Doesn't that look fun on top of there? Yeah, real pretty. So, real, you know, real pretty. When I do, when I make earrings mostly, um, I kind of am looking for a little more movement and a little bit more dangle. So, mm -hmm. I would go ahead and finish this off to the loop stage and then add another link above it. Sure. You could do that too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's kind of what we all do is we design as we go. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this one is done. I'm going to say. And I just wanted to mention also real quick, Emily, you're using your beloved Tronex pliers today. Oh, yes. I love my Tronex. Yeah. I the other one's off to photography. So. Yeah, no, it's no worries. But I did want to let people know if they ask, we have, we looked into carrying them and we decided since our good friends over at Beeducation, our buddy, Lisa Kelly, since she carries them over there, we're just going to, um, if you do want some Tronix, go visit, uh, Beeducation.com and grab your Tronix from Lisa. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I do love mine and, um, this is the way I make my living. And so mm -hmm. when I put it in that sort of sense of the word, I use them every They're a day great tool. All yeah. day for hours. Um, it's and worth it for me to have that. hundred percent. I love them. I have some in my personal collection as well. Also, if you folks are waiting for more Zuron to come back in, I know the 90 degree bent chain nose and stuff, those are coming. So, uh, Zeron is always sending us new stuff. So hang on. I, I do like Zeron a lot. I like the. Um, <laughs> I do too. I have to say, I like the weight of them. They're actually mm -hmm. kind of lighter weight than a lot of the other players. Um, I also like the fact, and let me, you just sent me this one, I think, the bent nose one. Yeah. Do you like it? I do. You know, um, strangely enough, uh, I've been having some vision things kind of going on lately. And I'm struggling a little bit. I'm going to have to go get a new prescription, I think. Um, but uh, this dark metal against anything that I'm working with is actually very easy on the eyes. It and really, it, I agree 100%. You know, and I, I go back and forth with handle styles, like different choices. I mean, there's, there's every kind of, I've got every kind of handle style, right? Let me show you what I've got sitting at my work table, right? I've kind of got every choice of different type of materials for handles. And for long term, I tend to like these ones that are a little bit smoother. The Tronics mm -hmm. are fine and I'm not, I don't complain about them. They're a little old and dirty, so they're getting smooth. But um, having that smoother handle, it's a little more comfortable in your hand for more time. I agree. So, um, I think Zeron tools you know, are super comfortable in my hands. One of my one favorites. Of that, uh, one of the things that happens, I think, as as you progress with jewelry making, the more you do of it, is you end up 
unfortunately, investing in tools. I don't know how many packages of tools I have come per week, but um, as you invest in tools, you do kind of narrow down the things that you like for your personal use. And everybody's a little different. Everybody's hands are a little bit, um, uh, a little bit of a different shape, and they have a little bit of a different need and requirement. Um, so you know, you do what makes you comfortable. What works for you. And hey, I have a quick question for you, and now sure. might be the time to answer it. Audrey's asking, how would how would you dangle another bead from the bottom of the wrap pearl? You know, you could do that. Um, let me. Give me a moment. Let's let's uh, let's talk this through. Um, we've got some wire. Can you add something in the loop of the folded over? Yeah, loop? I think we could do that. I have another one ready to go right here. So I was mm -hmm. trying my best to have my magic oven setup going on today. Y'all know about that, right? I don't mm -hmm. know. Does anybody but me love to watch a cooking show? I mean, I don't have to actually mm -hmm. be doing it. I just think it's entertaining, <laughs> right? So I love a cooking show. I love a cooking show. You know, could be Martha, could be um, whomever, right? Actually, here's a perfect bit of wire to work with. Let us let us make a head pin. So there are a bunch of different ways you can make a stopper on the end of a piece of wire. You you can do whatever jam you like. If you don't happen to have a head pin, or if you happen to have a scrap piece of wire that's an, anywhere from a half inch to an inch and a half long, you have a free head pin. So I'm going to take this little piece of wire. It's about an inch and a half long. I'm going to wind the end over. Now notice I'm right at the very tips of my pliers and making the smallest possible little loop I can. This goes back to making the Egyptian wire bracelet, right? I'm going to kind of collapse that little center, hold it gently in the pliers, and I'm going to round go around that little coil and it's only the first thousand of these that seem to take a little bit of time kate will kate will be, bear my witness there and i'm going to take my plier and center that little coil who loves a spiral everyone loves a spiral i'm going to slide it on here me so, i love a spiral I love I a spiral. That spiral. So even mm -hmm. though it doesn't look perfectly centered, maybe on this piece of wire, by the time I get the pearl up to it, it looks much more centered, right? I'm going to make this into a dangle by gripping it the, right above the pearl, bend the wire over, bring my round nose pliers in, right? And again, if I was making a pair of earrings here, I would make two of these step by step to the same point. So this is gonna hang, can hang in this little hook. What I am gonna do. Oh, that's a nice solution. I'm gonna actually go back to this little hook. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I didn't make it with that intention initially. So I'm gonna make that little hook a little bigger so that this will fit in and I'll still have enough room to grip the coil gently, okay? So a little bit of a back step there. We're not going to have a pair of earrings here. We're going to have two samples. Okay. Close that loop. Trim flush. So I'm cut, leaving the flush cut behind on the work. So <clears throat> when using plated materials also, flush cuts really make a difference in the durability of the plating where that cut has ma been made. So I don't need to work anything yet with that. I'm going to hold him aside. Clear out all the flotsam and jetsam here. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this frame that we were working on. And actually, I think I do this naturally, but I move that coil kind of out of my work area. So I don't really need that yet, that little hook, and it's kind of in the way. Okay. So again, I'm going to wind wire right around that head pin. And then I'm going to come back with this guy and wind around. So those two little wraps sit on top of one another. And really, they begin to blend into the wrap loop that I make. You can't really tell that there's anything there. Even if I look on the back 
it's pretty discreet. Okay. So I'm really looking to make something kind of as tidy and even as possible. I'm going to go ahead and trim flush. And close those little hooks so they're tight and they can't come undone. All right. And now let's add our dangle and pull this up so that it catches the coil. Not only did I need to make it bigger, I needed to make it more open. So that's okay. Grab it with my chain nose plier. Put it over that coil. And gently close it on the coil. Ooh, it's a little bit wigglier with that guy in there. I gotta say, it's not as smooth and easy as without. But it's doable, I think. No, it's not because I put lotion on my hands, Kate. Whoops. <laughs> That's looking good, Em. Yeah. So that hangs down. Leslie, is that what you were imagining? Yeah, it's real pretty. Right? Mm -hmm. So we could have done a coil on this one, too. All those yeah. things are totally possible. So to finish off this pair of earrings that's no longer a pair... Um, I'm going to make my bends above the bead, and I'll do it the same on both of these. So I'm planning this wrapped loop to be in the plane of the pearl, okay? I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. I'll make the loop to the same point. Again, that assembly line process for me is just what I do naturally. This is how I do work for myself, work for sale, work for you guys. I want to have a moment where I can compare these two loops to one another. So my loops aren't the same size, right? But I have a chance right now to change how that looks. So if I go past that kind of to completion and my loops are different sizes, then I don't have that chime, that chance to, to make that change. So that's why I like to do that in that process. If I, if I do these as the assembly line, I have a chance to make a change before I get to the end. And it's, for me, it's just about making things look the same and be even and not have to do too much work or fussing later on. So this is a real fun one to do. I tend to use just the bead to form my work. So when I did this square one, I did the same exact process, okay? Same little coil at the bottom, holding it up and bent the wire right around the edges of the bead. But I think that comes out real nice, right? Here's another option. This is another one that I showed off at the retreat. This time I made uh, a bead into more of a pendant and I wound my wire, my 26 gauge wire over my pre-made head pin. So this is actually a commercially made head pin that goes through this bead. And as it came up, I used that head pin itself to, wire, to coil the wire around. So I did the exact same process here. And then I used an interesting tool that you guys should know about. There's two, actually. We can either use a stepped plier to make a bigger loop, or you can use something like a large round nose or rosary plier to make that bigger loop. So forming the wire around something gives it some shape and some dimension. Now, this is a point with our oiled wire that we have to be a little bit gentle. If I grip down with the plier firmly, I'm going to mar that wire. So I'm really just using this as a mandrel. I'm just using it as something to wrap the wire around to give it another shape. Okay. Fun. I love this. I think it's the prettiest earring that you can make 
for someone for the holidays. It's super I quick, love this too. Super quick, super easy. Um, add a amazing ear wires that we're carrying now. Um, these ear wires are, they're kind of my favorites. The ones that have the little ball at the, at the end. These are kind of the ones that I use are, I use mostly for my work that I sell and myself. I like that this one has a very generous loop and, um, these are quite a nice gauge as well. These are a little heavier than many commercial ones you would see the, in this style. Um, and it means it's a little nicer quality because it's a little bit more metal. Yeah, those were part of the finds that we found in Tucson. We were so happy to reconnect with an old vendor that we hadn't yes. bought from in yes. so many years. So we're oh super stoked to be able to carry those again. Yeah. And then a quick question, um, sure. the coil that's around the pearl. Yes. That doesn't really hold the pearl in place. It's really just framing the pearl, right? It's the wire and the wire wrap that you do on top of it that stabilizes the pearl, right? Absolutely. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. if you do it loosely, a little loosely, you can actually rotate the pearl inside, but mm -hmm. I usually do it so it's a pretty solid kind of, you know, not going anywhere unless somebody really gets in there and starts bending it on, on it around. But that is not doing anything functional. It's just looking pretty. Nice. Which is a well, function. I love it. Well, I do too. Know. You know, you could also do this as a as a pendant. Um, and this would make a very pretty pendant for a young per younger person. Um, you know, we talk a lot about... Um, it would. And we have some nice ready-made chains for those too. Yeah. You know, the trend right now in younger people jewelry, um, because I'm, I'm on the forefront, I'm on the hotbed of seeing people every week and talking to them about jewelry that they want to purchase, um, is smaller and more delicate. So, right. you know, this would be a, a lovely pendant and is a, a huge step up from just a pearl on a head pin, you know, much more decorative, much more interesting. Um, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let me show you. Uh, so we're good, right? Yeah. Um, M, I can show a couple of things. Please do. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that okay? We've got a little bit of time. I think yeah. I'll take up this time, though. I do have to. Let me put all of us on the do it. on the thing here. Uh, okay, I'm going to add my above camera. Let me see. And we also launched today some, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Where did my, the, the, hold that thought, hold that thought, everyone. Sorry, Janice is saying younger person, question mark. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I'm always interested in how trends kind of happen and how people do things in fashion and, you know, what I'm seeing in different age categories or, or categories of, of folks that I interact with at the market a lot is younger people. And when I say younger, I mean sort of into the mid twenties ish. I've forgotten what generation we're on. Cause I don't know. Um, I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to label anyone. Um, younger folks are tending to want things that are more delicate and simpler, less kind of moving parts and less embellished. Whereas right. my younger folks that are closer to my own age or in between there, they are more interested in jewelry that is an accessory. It's not just a day-to-day -day wear, but it's an accessory that they add to the work that they're doing, you know, with their with their clothing. What are you going to show me, Kate? Oh, I'm I'm going to I'm attaching my above camera here. Oh, good. Hold that thought. Let me see. <laughs> Let me present it. Uh, extra camera. And uh, I I mean I I love getting feedback from people about their jewelry and, and um, you know, I, I like seeing people wearing different kinds of jewelry and putting on different outfits um, and doing that accessorizing with jewelry is, it's just so much fun. No, a hundred percent. I, speaking of accessorizing, let me show you folks what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing my, my gold. Ooh, look at all those bangles. My family bangles from my grandmother, from my buddy Beth Colbert's grandmother. Look at this. Beth gave Beautiful. me this beauty. And Beautiful. then from Chris's grandmother, this watch. And then I wanted to show you folks 
you can find the, these uh, orbits on. You can find these from Emily. Um, I got these from her, but I just love these bangles. These are one of your signature the, pieces, M. You know, the orbit bangles are um, really uh, a fun thing to make. And, and actually, it's funny, Helen and I have been emailing about challenges and I had another jewelry friend actually give me a big coil of that wire. Really? Ten gauge bronze wire. Wow. It's beefy. And I did not know what the heck I was going to make with those. I just, I couldn't even, I couldn't even kind of come up with an idea for it because I needed to use it. I love the color of it. It's not copper. It's not gold. It's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. That bronze. I just love it's it. It's just lovely. And so I taught myself to solder a bead on that bangle. You and did. There, were, there were some, there were some struggles. There were right. some learning a little bit, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of frustration, but really um, not too bad. And I also learned about needing more torch power. So that was 100%. Also, like when you need more, more go, more get up and go to make that work. Yeah. This bronze sucks up the heat. That is for sure. Yeah, I did a, a class on this just a few times um, with pearls and stuff. They're so fun to do, oh, but yeah. Emily's bangles, you can see, look at how beautiful those carved pieces are. So I love these. I wear them when I wear my stack of, of fanciness here. Oh, so um, I wanted to show you, and so you can follow Emily on her Insta, or you can see her also every Saturday at the, um, at the farmer's market. Yeah, and the Midtown Market in Sacramento. Um, we may be having a rain out this week where I'm still on pins and needles about that yet. Um, yeah. I, I don't have to make a decision until tomorrow morning. So we'll see. It's looking iffy. But um, I usually post something on my Instagram um, about what's coming up for um, the, uh, the market uh, each week. New things that I've made and then making and um, let you know that I'll be in my usual spot. But uh, if you happen to be in the area, love to have you come by and say hi. Um, and you can also purchase off my Instagram if you need to. So Yeah, they're really great. I, I just think these are great and they make such great gifts. I I like to think that I'm a collector. And Em, what's your uh, Insta? Uh, Emily B. Miller Jewelry. I have two Instas. So my regular Emily B. Miller and then that's just kind of friends and family. And then Emily B. Miller jewelry is where oh, I right. Perfect. land all of my good stuff. So sure. Please come over and follow me. You know, I'm a small, I'm a small business working on a small Insta. So I That's love what cool. your mom said that she would actually do this as a kind of a trio mm -hmm. necklace like this. And um, Gwen, I love that idea. Yeah. Ooh. It would look really nice. Wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be very fun. I just, I just saw something that made me think about multiple strands and it made me think about Janice's um, bird necklace, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it was needing, and this is kind of lucky. Um, it was needing some graduated shapes. Mm -hmm. So I might want to put one of these guys in the middle. You work with me here and do my more graduated ones to the outsides. Just forget that guy's hanging out there, right? Oh yeah, that would be real pretty. I think that's kind of the direction I'm going. And you know, I used to laugh at graduated pearls or anything like that and say, oh, ugh, grandma's pearls, you know? Anything yeah, but it's kind of fun. I but like now, the graduated. It's kind of coming back a little bit, you know, I'm having a little bit of a graduated moment, so. Yeah, I'm looking for, I think they're in my jewelry armoire, but the, I've, I wore them the other day, those graduated uh, the blue beads. Uh, the, the beads that you gave me. I love those so much. Yeah. I thought cool. I would put out here just as a reminder this big um, handmade like chain with that large um, spring ring. Yummy. You could make one of Emily's dangles and just dangle it from the chain and have that dangling. It would be great. You could add a charm and just do a charm. Or we also added a couple of new colors of the carved stones that we carry. Um, you could just either wire wrap that or you could 
frame one of these as well. I know why it looks dark. I don't have well, um, charm oh, clusters also having a moment mm -hmm. uh, as small as, as well as smaller, more delicate things and other side, other styles, but charm clusters wearing clasps in the front. Um, yeah. All kind of having a moment. Yeah. Layering, layering, layering. I oh, just yeah. love it. I, love it. that's why I have to do display of the day each Saturday because I need to layer up a bunch of things. And show right. Them. We got a layer. Yeah. So those are all in there. I wanted to show you folks also, since we have some time, the other um, strands that launched today, I'm going to go ahead and spotlight mine right here. Sorry, my, I'm a little. Are these the metal strands coming up? These are the metal strands. I'm so, really excited by those kind of um, bigger bronze bicone-ish or long ovals. Yeah. So the bicone, so here's the bicone right here. Let me see if I can get a little tighter in here for you. The bicones, I'm going to measure them. Let me, let me zoom in if I can. There we go. And all of the um, dimensions are on the website. But these would also look great, Emily. I think with the pendants that you made, you could string up a strand of these and dangle that pendant from it. Absolutely. You could do kind of like a float with some of these. I really just love them. So these are ones that we're going to have in our, as we said, in the, in the museum business, in our permanent collection. So these little babies right here, let me measure it for you a little over three millimeters this is the bicone and at its widest point it's also about three but yeah, uh they like come a lot yeah and the whole size is is generous not huge but also not tiny yeah i don't know if I you like can see that there. so that's this and they come as i said they come in the three colorways so that's this one um, we have, I want to show you, this one's really super special and it may not translate as well on the photo. So I wanted to show you this. This is a double spacer. Can you see? It's really hard to see, but oh, it's I like, see. I didn't get that. That was a double. I thought those were all singles. And I no, thought it's a little Gosh. double. So when you use it, it looks like two pieces of hishi kind of fused together. And these are, these are small, um, two millimeters. I don't know what's going on. They are, oh, I know what it is. It's garbage day. I'm like, what the heck is going on out there? I have, I have the, it's, um, today's the day the groundskeepers come. So, uh, the landscape folks come. So we have blowing and mowing going on in the background. Oh, right. Blowing and mowing. Uh, and so these are about one millimeter. My mom is asking if we can get these on leather. I have a strand actually that's open. So um, I think we could get this on. Let me see if it goes on a one millimeter. I know it'll go on a 0.5 for sure. Well, I've got some 0.5 right here. And that would probably be my stringing material of choice right there. Look at that. Oh, I really, nice. yeah. aren't they nice? They're yeah. really nice. And just by having a little, um, let me see if I can, do I have a cutter? You would think I, like I would. black ones especially. Yeah. Ugh. Let's see, let's see what fits. I'm going to just add a quick um, knot onto this. So this here, and I'm going to go once and twice around. So I have that doubled over knot so yep. that the knot goes nice and straight. That's my jam right there. Love That's that. Right. I use it all the time. Me too, except when I collapse the knot over. Let me untie that. Um, Come on. 
this is a moment of realism, all y'all. You guess, this is what really happens when we make That's children. That's right. right. Janice also says that she would put this on wax, Irish wax linen. I have been playing mm -hmm. with wax linen a bunch recently. 100% you could. You could do yep. that. There we go. I was rushing it. So you let it go in that figure eight and then push when, it together. That's right. Um, leather beads and pearls all together. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's nothing 100%. wrong with that. Nothing. So this one here, and then I could tie another little, of course, I cut myself the world's tiniest piece of leather cord, but <laughs> let's see what this looks like. It's either too long or it's too short. It's never quite perfect. It's never quite right. There we oh, go. Golly. Okay. So I, see here, I, look at how nice this is on the five millimeter. It looks real nice, I think. Yeah. And I that, guess. you could do a float like that and then get oh, yeah. Emily's pearl. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because it's a little close. You could get Emily's wire wrapped pearl, even though I didn't wire wrap it, but I have one here. Right? And that could dangle. That could yeah. dangle. It would look real nice. Let me see if these, I want to see if this carved... No, this hole is too small. Um, but these these would look great. Those would look great. It'd be so, real great. you know, one of the things that you do when you make dangles is you make a bead that doesn't have a big enough hole hang on something that's a bigger cord. So mm -hmm. making that charm out of a out of your carved piece would make make it hang on any material you want. You can make it right exactly you like it would look so nice. This is another fave. That's here. Is that this, the third one? This is the saucer. Oh, yeah. And the hole in this is really nice. Definitely on one millimeter. And let me measure them for you. These are just little, our sample strands that we got. They come in 24 inch strands, I think. So you get a ton of them. Five millimeters side to side. And then the little top to bottom I got Sounds a really, good. I got a really good project for this, Kate. We're gonna have to talk later. Oh, nice! I, I got something. For I you. just think that these are t terrific. I love them, love them, love them. Um, and again, the brass, the black, the silver, and the gold. So that's that one. Then we have this is another little spacer. We call this one the cog, and so this is a single. Is this like a hexagon? Like a it's one? not. It's like, see there. Let me see if I can it got get little it. Feet. So it has a super big, you so cannot see that at all. But um, it has a huge hole. Okay. And it's like a little faceted cog. Can you see the facets there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is in, in width... In height, in height, Emily. <laughs> oh gosh, you're taking me back, Kate. That's a little inside joke that we have: 0.5 millimeter in height. <laughs> you know, and, when you're, you're traveling with your friends or you're doing something with your friends, and something strikes you, and it's just like it's it the funniest thing yeah. <laughs> you've ever heard before. Uh, That's right. Let me see if I can focus a little bit. Um, these would all be great in bead crochet. hundred percent. They would. Yes. There we go. Yep. Um, if you follow our buddy, Cynthia Thornton, green girl, um, you'll see, uh, she has taken bead crocheting those long necklaces to another level. She does cool. really her, her taste in beads and supplies. Are, yeah. Those gemstones are gorgeous. Really good. You know. Then we have these are little rice beads. So they're oblong. Again, big hole, big hole there, um, but small bead. One, one millimeter. Let me re zero this. Wait, okay. till, wait till I show you the idea I have for these. Wait. I think that my, do you see this? I think my. Oh, you're dead battery? My battery just died. Uh, I have another one here, I think. That's irritating. Um, 
Talk amongst yourself. Let me see if I, I have another one at my desk. You know, I got to tell you, I used to tape a battery on the back of mine because oh, that's I smart. leave it on all the time. And now I try to be much more careful about it. But I would tape it right on the back of the... of the. That's um, smart. I'm going to have to change it. I don't know where my other caliper went, but yeah. that's okay. This I is... Let me see if I, I can read it without... Um, I, I oh, really sorry. Do. Dead air. Sorry. Horrible. I do um, get dependent, so dependent on my oh, wait, no. my caliper. Oh, it's back. It came back for a second. 1.9. And it's not a cube. It's more like a little barrel, but it has a little bit of a tapered end, so it's kind of like a rice. 2.2 yeah. millimeter there, tiny nice. rice. Nice. Um, so we have, so that's what we have here. Five new strands that's a lot of new let beads. Me see. let me see if i can get them here in all of the colors and they go together just beautifully i think oh, yeah. really really nice really yeah, nice that antique brass is always my fave yeah it's gorgeous yeah we have another couple of things coming down the pike let me take it off of my my upcoming my solo there we go. Um, we have, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this. Hey. I have a, a third Thursday earring kit for you folks tomorrow. So I'll be on tomorrow, 1030. Here's the third Thursday earring kit. It's right here. You folks are going to love it. And then my friends on Friday, Friday is going to be a big day. Yeah. You asked for it. More fun. We're doing it. These are Ooh. the monthly mix reissues. <gasps> one That's from so every cool. year. One from every year from 2016 on, I think. Really? 2016. Let me That's see. Exciting. 19, 21, 22. 17. Oh no, we started this in 2017. So 17, 18. I'm looking at them right now. 18. Can you tell? 18. This one's 2019. This one's 2020. 2021. I know you want to see them, but you're gonna have to wait till till dang it. Till Friday. 2021 and 2022 and 2023. So it's our most popular ones. They're coming. So um so I'm going to show you those on Friday. We'll take a look a little bit more at those metal beads. Um, and I'll, I'll open up the strands um, and show them to you. But I wanted to give you um, kind of a preview of what's so going good. on there. Good choice. Good pickouts. I think they'll be fun. So I'll see you uh, tomorrow, Thursday, for third Thursday earring. Janice is doing the third Thursday earring for December, and it's gorgeous. Cool. Gorgeous. I love it. Um, you can buy each individual tube. It's not a bundle. So you can decide which ones you want. They're extremely limited. We didn't make a lot of them, but, um, there's enough. So, or at least enough for those of you who are early to get them. Um, but we'll talk about them. We'll talk about all of the monthly mixes. I've got some other monthly mix samples here for you to look at, et cetera. So Friday is going to be all about monthly mix. Then, um, yeah, that's that story. So that <laughs> closes out the end of this week. So, um, I think that with this earring, we've got so many possibilities with this oh, earring. You sure. can do it as yeah. a pendant. Um, oh, this is what I wanted to show you folks. We do have, let me see if I can show you real quick. If I can go, let me add my screen. You were saying, um, it would make a really great, pendant yep. uh i want to share my screen here we have a and, you know, this doesn't just have to be the coin pearl you could really do this technique around anything you know 100 percent. yeah uh let me go to one of those carved beads um i was thinking today to use the check glass tubes i don't know if those are still in existence um any of check glass flowers would be kind of fun to do. Yeah, it would be so nice. Mm -hmm. 
The ready-made chains that we have, folks, we've got them all right here on the website. We have them in sterling. We also have them in the gold and the silver plate. And we have them in all links, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. That's so, really nice. yeah, they're really great. I love these if chains. You made three or four of these for Christmas presents, it, it would knock a lot off your list. Yeah, you're done and done. I yep. love it. Yeah. So let me get rid of that right here. Remove it. Okay. Well, M, I think that's it. Thank you so Good much. Fun. This uh, went smoothly and quickly. You guys get yourself, get you some wire, get you some head pins, and I, get some ear wires, and you're good to go. And get you going. Um, you can find, I'm going to cover you up for just a second here, Em. You can, uh, don't forget, you can find us on all of our social. So please give us an engagement on social media through our Facebook, our Pinterest, our Insta. Hit that like and subscribe button over on YouTube. And if you like our content, friends, the best gift you could give us beyond purchasing from our little tiny shop is to share out this social media to whoever you think might be interested in what it is we do here at beadshop.com. Also, if you have any questions, don't forget to shoot us an email over at info at beadshop.com. And do not forget to find everything that Emily used today, plus some of our new products, all of that right on our website at beadshop.com. Stay in touch and sign up for our newsletter because that's the way that you uh, get our discount coupon codes, our special launches, all that stuff. It all comes through the newsletter. Yep. And we want to say a big thank you because you know, you're looking at like a third of the company right here yeah. with the two of us right? <laughs> so do remember friends, we are a small business, yeah. um, woman led, uh, we've been in the biz since 1992 online since 1996. Thank you very much. Um, and we really, really appreciate your support, uh, because without you guys out there, we wouldn't be able to do what we love. Yeah. So Emily, I'll be seeing you again soon, uh, for another show. And then you and I have an end of the year show cooked up that I think is going to be fun. Yeah. Um, with you and I, and maybe Janice, if we can, if we can convince her, her of it, I think it's going to be fun. I but anyway, yeah, it'll be good times. So uh, thanks to you. Thanks to you. And I'll see you tomorrow for that third Thursday airing. Thanks have everybody. Fun, thanks so much. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.